After successfully soft landing on the moon, India is going to the sun. Yes, you heard it right. A new mission, Aditya L1, which is being designed and developed by ISRO, the Indian Space Research Organization, along with various other Indian research institutes. In this video, let us try to understand what is mission Aditya L1 in very simple terms. It is going to be a very interesting video, so watch till the end. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It's free for you, but will definitely make a significant impact for us. This is Vishwas, let's deep dive. So why is India going for the sun? And what is the meaning of Aditya L1? Aditya is one of the names of our sun in Sanskrit, the most significant source of energy in our entire solar system. Without sun, we would not be even in the existence. For common people like you and me, it is just a routine that sun rises in the morning, sets in the evening. So simple, right? Well, no. Understanding sun is not that easy. There are many mysteries that scientists have not yet resolved. The sun is very dynamic star and extends much beyond what we see. It shows several eruptive phenomena and releases immense amount of energy in the solar system. If such explosive solar phenomena is directed towards the Earth, it could cause various types of disturbances in the near space environment. Various spacecrafts and communication systems are prone to such disturbances and therefore an early warning of such events is very important for taking corrective measures. In addition to these, if an astronaut is directly exposed to such explosive phenomena, he or she would be in danger. The various thermal and magnetic phenomena on the sun are of extreme nature. Thus, the sun also provides a good natural laboratory to understand those phenomena which cannot be directly studied in the lab. Landing on the sun is impossible. So, observing our star from the distance is the only way to study it. And without that, it will not be possible to resolve these mysteries and understand how exactly our sun works and how does it impact on the other planets in our solar system. So what were the existing missions? Aditya L1 is not the first mission to the Sun. So before going into the details of Aditya L1, let us first quickly see what were the previous missions sent to study the Sun. Well, there are a number of such missions. Some are still ongoing. The NASA, the European Space Agency and the German Aerospace Center have mainly sent these missions. And now ISRO is joining the league. Almost all of them were sent to observe the Sun from a longer distance except NASA's Parker Solar Probe, which was a flyby-type mission sent for a close-range solar coronal study. But basically, what is Sun made of and what are the unsolved mysteries from the previous missions? Previously, I mentioned that there are several unsolved mysteries about the Sun and scientists are trying to find the answers. One of such unsolved mysteries is coronal heating. To understand this issue, you need to understand the basic structure of our Sun. Let me explain. If you already know the details, please feel free to skip to the next chapter. Like Earth, Sun is also made of multiple layers. The internal structure of the Sun contains three layers. First, the core. The core is the hottest and densest part of the Sun. It is where hydrogen atoms fuse together to form helium atoms, releasing a tremendous amount of energy. It is called a nuclear fusion. The temperature at the center of the core is believed to be more than 15 million degrees Celsius. Second, the radiative layer. The radiative layer lies on the top of the core. It is a region where energy is transferred through radiation, which means that photons travel through the plasma. Plasma is basically a hot ionized gas. The third is convection layer. The convection layer is the outermost layer of the sun's interior. It is a region where energy is transferred through convection which means that hot plasma rises to the surface, cools and sinks back down. Same principle using which water boils. The temperature at the base of the convection zone is about 2 million degrees Celsius. And this is the lowest temperature in sun's interior. The external atmosphere of the sun has six layers. First is the photosphere. The photosphere is the visible surface of the sun. It is the coolest part of the sun's atmosphere at about 5,500 degrees Celsius. Sunspots, which are dark patches on the photosphere, happen in this layer. Second, sunspots. Sunspots are the dark patches on the surface of the sun that are caused by intense magnetic fields. They can last for a few days to a few months and their absence can affect Earth's climate because it can cause the sun to become cooler by 1%. Third is chromosphere. 
the chromosphere is the layer of the sun's atmosphere that is visible as a dim red ring during solar eclipses the temperature of the chromosphere increases with the height the fourth is corona the corona layer is the outermost layer of the sun's atmosphere during a total solar eclipse it can be seen as a white glowing corona it has a temperature up to 2 million degrees celsius and this is one of the mysteries of the sun the temperature of the photosphere is approximately 5500 degrees celsius whereas the temperature of the corona reaches up to 2 million degrees celsius the high temperature of the corona shows that it is heated by something other than the direct heat conducted from the photosphere this is called the mystery of coronal heating and scientists are still trying to solve it aditya l1 will also try to solve the same mystery the fifth one is solar flares solar flares are sudden bursts of energy from the sun's corona that are caused by the sudden release of magnetic energy they happen because of the fluctuation in the magnetic field and the sixth one solar winds solar winds are a stream of charged particles from the sun composed of protons electrons and alpha particles the speed of the solar winds can reach up to 900 kilometers per second one more such mystery is theoretical models of the sun's development suggest that 3.8 to 2.5 billion years ago the sun was only about 75% as bright as it is today such a weak star would not have been able to sustain liquid water on earth's surface and thus life should not have been able to develop however the geological record demonstrates that the earth has remained at a fairly constant temperature throughout its history and that the young earth was somewhat warmer than it is today one theory among scientists is that the atmosphere of the young earth contained much larger quantities of greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide methane etc than are present today which trapped enough heat to compensate for the smaller amount of solar energy reaching it aditya l1 will study our star and try to solve these types of mysteries so why study from the space can't we do it from the earth the sun emits radiation or light in nearly all wavelengths along with various energetic particles and magnetic field the atmosphere of the earth as well as its magnetic field acts as a protective shield and blocks a number of harmful wavelengths radiations including particles and fields as various radiations don't reach the surface of the earth the instruments from the earth will not be able to detect such radiation and solar studies based on these radiations could not be carried out however such studies can be carried out by making observations from outside the earth's atmosphere that is from space similarly to understand how the solar wind particles and magnetic field from the sun travel through the interplanetary space Measurements are to be performed from a point which is far away from the influence of the earth's magnetic field. So where will India send its probe? The answer to this question is in the name of the mission itself, Aditya L1. This L1 means the Lagrange point L1 of the sun earth system. Initially the spacecraft will be placed in the lower earth orbit. Subsequently the orbit will be made more elliptical and later the spacecraft will be launched towards the Lagrange point L1. by using on board propulsion aditya l1 spacecraft will be put 1.5 million kilometers away from the earth near l1 lagrange point it will take about 4 months for the spacecraft to reach there and once reached there it will be injected in the halo orbit around l1 point the whole mission duration is over 5 years so it is a long term mission isro is doing this mission in mere 378 crores even cheaper than chandrayaan 3 which was 615 crores The planned launch date is 2nd September 2023 from Satish Dhawan Space Center Shri Harikota Andhra Pradesh. So it is expected to reach its destination somewhere in the January 2024. Wait, but what is Lagrange point? Couldn't catch that. No worries, bhai samjha dega abhi. Our earth rotates around its axis and while doing so it orbits around the sun, right? The Lagrange points are the points or places in the space where the gravitational pull of the two large bodies in this case sun and the earth is balanced there are five such lagrange points in each system of two massive bodies example sun earth earth moon jupiter sun etc so the objects part at these points stay there naturally or with minimal energy and they orbit at the same speed as of the orbiting body in this example earth and this is very crucial for the long term missions 
as the spacecraft sent into the deeper space they have to be very power efficient apart from energy efficiency there are other advantages of sending spacecrafts at lagrange points first one is stability a spacecraft placed there will tend to stay there without requiring much fuel to maintain its position this is important for solar probes which need to be able to maintain a stable position for longer period of time in order to make a detailed observation of the sun second is continuous view of the sun lagrange points are located in front of or behind the earth so a spacecraft placed there will have a continuous view of the sun without being blocked by earth or moon this is important for solar probes which need to be able to observe the sun from all angles in order to understand its behavior third one is reduced interference from earth lagrange points are located far away from the earth so a spacecraft parked there will be less affected by interference from the earth's atmosphere and radio emissions this is important for solar probes which need to be able to make sensitive observations of the sun what scientific observations or studies will be made by india spacecraft aditya l1 isro is sending seven payloads along with aditya l1 let's try to understand the purpose of each one of them in lame terms using the spatial vantage point l1 four payloads will directly view the sun and the remaining three payloads will carry out in situ studies of particles and fields at the lagrange point l1 the suit of aditya l1 payloads are expected to provide most crucial information to understand the problems of coronal heating coronal mass injection pre flare and flare activities and their characteristics dynamics of space weather study of the propagation of particles and fields in the interplanetary medium etc let's try to understand each one of the payloads in brief if you already know the details please feel free to skip to the next chapter the first one is visible emission line coronagraph corona means crown and it is the outermost layer of the sun's atmosphere whereas the coronagraph is an instrument that creates an artificial total solar eclipse in space by blocking the direct sunlight so by blocking the direct sunlight we can study the corona in detail additional objectives of this payload are determining why solar atmosphere is so hot and how changes in sun can affect space weather and earth's climate second Solar Ultraviolet Imaging Telescope suit This instrument is developed by IUCAA Pune in collaboration with ISRO It will observe the sun between 200 to 400 nanometers wavelength and provide full disk images of different layers of the sun's atmosphere The sun has never been observed from the space in this wavelength range Third Aditya Solar Wind Particle Experiment aspects This instrument will be used to study the variation and properties of the solar wind I have already explained what is solar wind. If you have missed it, please watch it again. Fourth, plasma analyzer package for Aditya or PAPA. This instrument is to understand the composition of the solar wind and its energy distribution. Fifth, solar low energy X-ray spectrometer or SOLEX. This instrument will monitor X-ray flares for studying the enigmatic coronal heating mechanism. As I mentioned about the mysteries of our sun, its corona is much hotter than the surface and this instrument will be useful to solve that mystery. Sixth, high energy L1 orbiting X-ray spectrometer. This will observe the dynamic events in the solar corona and provide estimate of the energy used to accelerate the solar energetic particles during the eruptive events. Seventh, magnetometer. Finally, the magnetometer to measure the magnitude and the nature of the interplanetary magnetic field. So, what is the impact of this mission on India and on the world? If ISRO scientists solve the mysteries of our sun, we can understand our star and its behavior in detail. Achieving this mission successfully will be one more jewel in India's crown. This mission will be crucial to understand global climate where sun is the main driver. Ultimately, it's all related to the survival of all the species on the earth. The new India is not going to stop and even sky is not the limit anymore. I try to explain the details of this mission in simple terms as much as possible. Give it a thumbs up if you like the content and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more such interesting videos. I will catch you in the next until then. Peace.